Hello everybody and welcome back to Goblin Views. I am your titular goblin and today I am accompanied by Akasha. Hello. And uh we're we're back to bring you another Spider-Man review, but 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 it's the the penultimate one this time before No Way Home. Hey. Uh Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Uh a movie that came out in 2019, right? 2018? Mm. 2018. 2018, uh, directed by... Hold on. Uh, I might butcher names. I'm sorry. I will try my best. Akasha will correct me. Bob Pershetti? Bob Persichetti. Persichetti. Peter Ramsey and Rodney Rothman. Um, it's starring... Uh, we got... We got... We got a lot of actors. We got Haley Steinfeld as, as Gwen Stacy. We've got, um... Chris, how many people people do we got playing Spider-Man? We got Chris Pine, yeah. uh, that guy from New Girl. What's his fucking name? Um, I don't freaking know. Mike Mike Johnson. I here. Let me see. I have it pulled up here. Mm -hmm. Or Jake Johnson. That's his name. Um, hey Eclipse, welcome to the stream. Hello. Hope you're excited to talk about Spider Verse. Um, we got we got uh, Sh I I believe his name's pronounced Shamik more right. Yeah. Yeah, they got he plays Miles. Um but yeah, we're just uh we're going to I I'm just excited to talk about this movie because I I I don't I we don't really even need to go into this. Everybody fucking like being like coy about it. Everybody loves this movie. And it's and freaking and we we fucking love it too. Mm -hmm. Uh and this is my second time watching it. You said it's your fucking bless you. Yeah. You said it's your fourth time? Yeah, it's my fourth time. <clears throat> is it still good on the fourth? Yes, it's still incredible on the fourth watch. Uh, I guess let's get into. Do we even need to do non-spoiler stuff? If we're if we're just already be being blatant that we're just saying we liked it. Yeah, the movie's freaking awesome. This is like. Yeah, just go watch it. If, if you, you haven't, if you haven't even watched it, just go watch it. If you don't even care about Spider-Man, watch this movie. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's like it's got so much besides just being a Spider-Man film. It's like mm -hmm. it's just perfect all around in every single way. Music, acting, uh, cinematography, uh, colors, uh, liter literally anything you you could want out of a movie, you get it in this movie. It's so good. It's like the the peak of Cinema. using animation to your advantage. Yeah, it's like one of the prime examples I use in my head for mm -hmm. why I think that animation is like the ultimate form of it's like storytelling. Mm -hmm. Because it's like you can just do so much you can't. Like, I don't know, like, watching this movie, it's like... Uh, Something as small as like the Green Goblin's in this movie, right? And he's a huge <laughs> for like thirty seconds. For like thirty seconds, but he's a huge ass monster as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just something that I don't expect to see in a live action setting, and I imagine we're gonna see the Green Goblin as a big ass monster in a CG thing at some point. But it, I don't think it's gonna look as impressive as that. No. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, I guess let's just get. We recommend it. Go watch it. If you haven't already watched it, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. We're kind of just here to talk about how much we love the movie anyway at this point. Um, I watched it with my parents and they didn't like it. They thought it was weird and my dad thought the fact that there was an anime girl and it made the movie bad, LMAO. <laughs> well, your parents are stupid. <laughs> it's a bold statement to make. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sure your parents are lovely people, but that is a dumb opinion. <laughs> it's just... Not not to say opinion. Okay, not that. Okay, not that their opinion is wrong, but it's like I don't understand how you can't look at this movie. See, Eclipse is even agreeing with me, saying pretty much <laughs> lol. Um, <clears throat> it's just like we were saying. There's there's literally everything. There's, I mean, maybe it's too overwhelming for someone from that generation. They're like, oh, but all, like all these colors and they stuff. Really can't, they really can't. They really can't. Like, a, like a dad can't connect to the dad plot with Jeff because, like, that's like the most touching stuff in the movie. I don't know. And, like, if you're a dad, I feel like you should be able to connect to that as like if you have a kid. I really just think though, it's not about the story, and a lot of people look at that. Hello, Rose. Welcome to the stream. Sorry. But they look at the outer veneer of the movie, and if it's a little too crazy for them, like, oh, there's well, yeah, the colors you, well, in what? Because movie. well, yeah, it's just the same thing where people don't respect animation because they think it's for kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
but yeah, all right, let's get into the actual review, I guess. Yup, yup. All right, movie starts out and we get an explanation of who Spider-Man is. This time it's Chris Pine, Chris Pine Spider-Man. Uh, he's been Peter Parker for 10 years. Uh, he's just, he's just regular old Spider-Man. They kind of take stuff from, like, the Sam Raimi movies to give him as his backstory or whatever. Yeah. Uh, anything, anything you gotta say about Chris Pine's Spider-Man? He's a good Spider-Man. Yeah, he is a good Spider-Man. Um. He dies. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess he, he died, like, he, he's only there really to die. Um. But, uh. Oh, okay, so then I guess I, we, as soon as we meet him, learn his introduction, we meet Miles. Mm hmm Um, do you want to... Miles is, um, a cute little high school... Right, high school? Yeah, he's... High school, yes, high school yeah, kid. yeah, he's like 16, I uh, think. Uh, going to a private academy now. Yeah, he's going to a new school. Yeah, because his, his parents want him to, because his dad is like... I want you to go to the big smart school with all the wealthy kids. And then we... I I want to say here, I really like the storytelling here that you know it's good because uh, they don't say anything about this. Not a single you, you word. You can be on your notes there, dork. Yeah? Remember when you're talking... Yeah, no, you're I know. Well, you weren't on your notes, so I but was I like... But I can remember. Oh, okay. I was just trying shut to be up, helpful, bro. Up, I was up, just up. trying to be helpful, shut dude. Up, shut up. But, um... No, uh, without really saying a single word, there's like a whole montage where we see that he's overwhelmed by the new school because he feels like he doesn't fit in and because it's like he's oh, now with well, a bunch of high-performing kids and they're performing at the same rate he is, which is kind of startling to him because he must have been a kid who performed higher than everybody else at his former school. And we get that just from like... A montage with no words. Gosh, you're skipping ahead, but we got a lot of inter characters to introduce, such no, as no, 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 his no. dad, who's like actually important. There's no characters in this movie. <laughs> I mean, you're telling me. You go ahead. You fill in the gap. Um. Also, uh, Eclipse says, "I just think he didn't understand why there was an anime girl in it." Uh. Yeah, I, I can understand that. Uh, see, you're you're skipping over the "I love you, Dad" scene, which is actually a, like it's a stupid scene, but it's an it's like it, I I wanted to bring it up because I'm uh, not skipping over it. I'm just talking about a thing I want to talk about. You can talk about. Oh, uh, like I guess you about. don't care about dads, dads and movies, dude. I care about dads and movies. Okay, go ahead then. Uh, shit. Also, Rose says, uh, well, no. Uh, to finish off, uh, Eclipse says that he's going to see the new Spider-Man film with his his dad. I think just your dad or with both your parents. Um, I'm glad that you're going to see that. That's awesome with your parents. That's very, very cool. Um, also, Rose said um, Miles is an uh, Afro Latina king. Then she's doing I Love You, Dad. Um, such a good, such a dad thing to do. I love good movie dads with my dad and my brother. Oh, you're, uh, Eclipse is saying he's going to see Spider-Man with his dad and his brother. Well, that's awesome. That yeah, is very sweet. awesome. We all love Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Man's awesome. Um, <clears throat> I love good movie dads, too, and that's because I don't talk to my actual dad. So that's the only reason I, I like, uh, want to talk about this is because it makes me feel something. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it, I wish Jeff was my dad. <laughs> I guess that's that's at the end of the day. That's what this movie makes me feel is I just wish da Jeff was my dad. Mm -hmm. Like he's a really good dad. Um, there is obviously the the bit in the beginning where he embarrasses Miles before he goes to school, where he makes him say "I love you" in front of all of his friends or whatever. Or not it's or, paralleled at the end. Which yeah, which is paralleled at the end or whatever. But it's it's there are a lot of parallels in this fucking movie mm -hmm. from like the beginning to the end, even if you don't notice it, mm -hmm. like small things. Um. No, but just, I wish Jeff, I wish Jeff was my dad. <laughs> and that's it. He's just a good ass dad. He cares. all you wanted to Well, say? no, it's just, hey, it, hey, like, hey. he just is, it, it makes you really, really sad because, you, I don't know, you can see it from, like, I don't know, he's a, he's just a really well-written dad character when you can see it from his angle, too. Mm -hmm. Like, because, I don't know, usually when you're a kid, you're like, oh, fuck you, dad, you're wrong. But when you can watch both characters and be like, okay. I understand why both of them feel the way that they do. Yeah. Then, you know, 
more power to the movie and the characters. Mm -hmm. uh, I love good movie dads for a similar re reason, which is why I love incorporating a Jeff-style dad character into my stuff. Yeah, it's just... It just makes you feel nice, even if it's like you don't have that in your own life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and and it, it, at least for me, it gives me a sense of reason to to want to see the like this movie through. If not for anything else, I I like it a whole lot to see the relationship between Miles and, and his dad. Yeah. I think that is like and that's what Spider-Man is. It's the same thing with Peter Parker needing Aunt May and Uncle Ben, which they even have Aunt May quite a bit in this fucking movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like more than more than the fucking Amazing Spider-Man one, it seems. And now Aunt May doesn't even have a Peter in this universe. Yeah, the hair Peter's dead, as yeah. we talked about. But um, my dad is a wonderful dad, just a lack of presence. Haha. <laughs> just to be clear, very very busy man. Oh no, I get you, Rose. I know that your dad's a good guy. I I get that. Mine's not. <laughs> um, but, uh, meeting Spider-Gwen? Yeah. Slash Gwenda? Gwanda. Gwanda, so yeah. yeah um, <laughs> Gwanda. Uh, She's from South Africa? Yeah, Miles is going to school, <laughs> uh, and he meets a new girl named uh, Gwanda from South Africa, who's mm -hmm. just Gwen Stacy. <laughs> um, uh, we... There's not a whole lot about her. Miles rips her hair off because when he gets the spider powers later, but that's about it. Mm -hmm. There's not a whole lot. She's just introduced in this early parts to like establish her as a character. Yeah. Uh, also, they say in the beginning, just uh, there's like a part where Miles is walking to school and someone's like, Oh, uh, did you hear that earthquake last night? And then he's like, oh, yeah, no, there's like I a, like a baby. Yeah, there's like a bunch of like news reports of like seismic activity going on and Spider-Man's like investigating it or whatever. Yeah. This is before he dies, obviously. We, yeah. we kind of spoiled that he dies a little bit early, but he uh, does die really, really quick on. Yeah. Um... Miles, uh, specifically is giving himself uh, absolute zeros. Uh, in school, so he'll that that he'll get kicked out because he doesn't want to be there anymore. He wants to go back to the public school. Yeah, um, which the teacher realizes is just him giving himself an accidental one hundred, basically, because she makes a good point that I don't know. I I guess the point that she makes is that if you if you're guessing blindly on a multiple choice, you're guaranteed to at least get one right, and you have to at least know all the right answers to not get them right. Which I yeah. I feel like that's a little bit of a stretch, but obviously you need to know at least a little bit to get. An absolute zero. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> but yeah, now Miles is being asked to please apply himself because everybody realizes the potential he has, but he doesn't want to apply himself. Um. People expect as as the story that he's made to read great expectations in 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 school. Uh, people expect great expectations from him. Mm -hmm. Um. Rose said, "If you're purely going on blind probability, she's correct." We were having a conversation, though. She said on multiple choice questions, yeah. you should get 50% of them wrong. What if there's, like, three answers per multiple yeah, because choice in the, question? Yeah, in though? the movie, it's like, oh, there were only two answers. But every multiple choice I've ever had in a test is more often than not. Like, yeah, obviously, there's, like, true and false or whatever. But if there's... It's not that, then it's, like, a, a four four question thing i don't know yeah that's that that's that, 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 that was my point it. It, it, like i get the idea behind it i was just it's a dumb mm. it, it, it's just me making point poking dumb logic <laughs> dumb at, holes, yeah, yeah at, at something that doesn't need to be i you know what i mean yeah um we meet uncle aaron who's um miles's uncle uh played by marshall Mar Mar god I, I don't know if i'm ever pronouncing his name right uh, Marshala? Maharshala? Maharshala Ali. Mahershala, oh, yeah, okay. Mahershala Ali. There you go. Yeah, but he plays uh, Uncle Aaron. He's the new Blade, uh, so that's pretty cool. He's he's also, I believe he was in Moonlight, uh, if you guys have seen Moonlight. Um, oh, he was also in Green Book, I guess. Uh, yeah, I remember he's the main character. I, one of the main characters. I, he, I mean, I, I didn't care for Green Book. I didn't even watch it, but I know that. <laughs> well, yeah, I just kind of forgot about that movie, I guess. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, you're actually right. I want to say now that we're mentioning Uncle Aaron, you're right on a point. Me? This, yes. Okay. This is the one thing I'm like, yeah, I feel like there's a hole here, which is where you said we don't ever know why the parents don't like Uncle Aaron. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That they never make a point to explain what Uncle Aaron did. For the parents to like absolutely hate him and it's obvious the idea is he's a criminal right or whatever mm -hmm. but it's like is the idea is that he's been the prowler like this whole time i don't know it's weird because I because don't, he uh, I spoilers don't he is the prowler one of the villains in this movie i don't know if they thought like has he been doing other things uh, yeah i guess that that's it's just it's not so much of a plot hole as it's just i would like explanation as to why the fuck the parents are like so because it's like Uncle Aaron does treat Miles very well. You yeah. know what I mean? That's the thing is it's like he's a he's a bad dude. He does bad things or whatever, but he does treat his nephew very, very well. Yeah. Um, I just wish it was a little clearer to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, Uncle Aaron is... Although I can make assumptions, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you're supposed to, I, I guess. I yeah. don't know. Um, but Uncle Aaron is just... Uh, kind of the figure in Miles' life that he can go to and talk to. Uh, because he doesn't feel like he can talk to his dad. Uh. Yeah, he feels like he's a little too, uh, oppressive, I guess? Hard, hard on him, I guess, yeah. yeah. Um, which is the only reason he does that is because he sees a lot in Miles, which we, we get, like, an explanation more for later in the movie. Mm -hmm. Um, we get... The famous hey shoulder thing that <laughs> Uncle Aaron teaches Miles, where it's hey. like, yeah, where you to to get the attention of a woman, you put your hands on your hand on her shoulder and you go hey, <laughs> and that's it. It's so terrible. He didn't give him anything to back that up afterwards. Because <laughs> he tries it on Gwen Stacy later and it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uncle Aaron and, and Miles then go to a uh, subway station, abandoned subway station, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to spray paint because that's what Miles likes doing. Uh, he likes making art with spray paint and stuff. This is like one of the visually like best scenes, though. It's so yeah, it, well, because it's the introduction of the spider as well. Yeah. Uh, the spider that's going to obviously bite Miles. And we only notice for the <clears throat> first time during this movie that the spider must be from another dimension as well because it's glitching. Yeah, yeah. Well, and they like we said, they, they have been testing this device that Kingpin has that opens the dimensions or whatever. Yeah, so the spider must have come through that collider the night <clears throat> before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which but, is very interesting because it kind of makes the Miles Morales becoming Spider-Man even more of a random chance yeah. than Peter Parker. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's from another fucking dimension. <laughs> And and the colors are just crazy in this. Oh yeah, doing graffiti. Yeah, and you got like the spider. There's like a there's um, you got some Biggie playing in the background. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there's like the spider jumping on top of the, the spray paint cans, and he's like changing colors with yeah. the cans because that's like one of the spider powers is that he goes like invisible or whatever. Uh huh. Um, but no, it, it is a a really great scene. I also wanted to talk about the graffiti that they make. Um. They t which Miles titles it No Expectations. Mm -hmm. I think I, I just want to point out how brilliant that is that the the scene of him painting something called No Expectations leads to something with great expectations which is obviously a constant theme as I've mentioned with him writing the book called or the, writing the paper called Great Expectations mm -hmm. and reading the book. Damn. Um, obviously Miles gets bit by the spider. <laughs> no shit. Yep. Um... Just want to mention real quick, all the jokes in this movie still land really, really well. Like, there's a joke where the spider bites him, and it's, like, this really, really serious thing where you see, like, inside his blood cells, like, transmuting and forming together, but it's just him in the real world, and he just slaps the spider. They do. There, there was only one joke I didn't like, and it wasn't because the joke was bad. It was because the timing was bad. What? It's where... They're talking about... I, I, I'm moving a little bit slightly ahead, but... Eclipse says, fuck my life. Have you seen the meme where Gwen picks up Miles' drawings with the page and it's replaced with her his face saying hey? <laughs> I've seen a bunch of memes from that new Spider-Verse trailer. 
or where it's like like him drawing like fucking anime porn and her picking it up and stuff. So yeah, yeah I <laughs> I know where you're talking about Eclipse. But no, there's a joke when they're also at... we didn't say this. Rose has said that the the teacher's point earlier was correct. You are right. Her point is correct. Yeah, yes. yeah. Um, but um, I was saying though the, the joke where they're at like MJ giving the speech about um. Peter being dead. Oh, well, should we do that when Peter actually dies? Yeah, I'll tell about it later, yeah. I guess. Um, not to not to be like, oh, but it's just like that's yeah, a little I bit later know. and we're almost you, there. I guess. Yeah, I don't, don't worry, bro. <laughs> uh, so Miles gets bit and then he gets his spider powers. There's like a whole thing. Do we anything you want to mention about the bit where he gets the spider powers? There's like a whole funny bit where he like sticks to walls and stuff <laughs> like that. Yeah, it's, it's just kind of the thing, like, um, like I think they do it in the Sam Raimi movies where it's, like, exploring the powers and seeing what they do and stuff. You were saying, though, that this movie does it better than any Spider-Man movie, though. I think it does, because it's, like, they show that there's actually some, like, anxiety that comes with it. With all the other Spider-Man well, movies, they're like, this is fucking awesome, well, I'm Spider-Man. Well, I, th I think the, the reason, though, the anxiety part is part of it is because they make one of the spider powers in this, like, universe that you talk to yourself like a comic book character, which is yeah, something that... Yeah, be funny. No, 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 I know, but I'm saying I think that's what makes it seem like he's more anxious is because he instantly starts talking to himself only then. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um... <clears throat> Uh, 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 oh, Collider Machine and Miles meeting Spider-Man. So Miles goes to find the spider that bit him because he doesn't know, he, like, he, he does he's like, what the fuck, where'd these powers go? Yeah, from? and he's, like, obviously, the original Spider-Man exists, so he puts two and two together, and he's like, oh, shit, am yeah. I Spider-Man? Yeah. Um, also, there's comic books in this universe of Spider-Man, and that's what he kind of takes it from, too, which I think is really, really cool that Miles Morales, while Peter Parker, like, dies, gets to learn how to be Spider-Man from comic books of Peter Parker. Very interesting. Yeah, I also As well as, obviously, having, like, the interdimensional Spider-Man I people, also wanted to say people. there's a, a cool shot where, like, he goes up to the spider because he smacked it and it's dead so it's just on its back with its legs in the air oh it's like and, entrapping him yeah and yeah. the spider legs are like framing his face and then his body yeah 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 I thought it was really good um but this instantly goes into the green goblin showing up beating the shit out of regular spider-man Mm -hmm. Um, and it turns. Spider Man is just getting owned. Yeah. Well, no, he he's winning the fight at first. He does he doesn't start losing until the Prowler shows up. Yeah, and then it's <clears throat> it's actually really more fucked up because there's a point where it sounds like he's joking, but he goes, "Oh God, I'm really tired," and you're like, "He is not fucking joking. He is exhausted." No, yeah, no, he gets like he get he gets. Uh, no, they make it a real point to like show that these Spider-Men don't really want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And I don't know... In this movie... I, watching it again, it's like... Did Peter Parker let himself get killed in that movie? In that scene where he dies? No. What but, do you mean? No, because he said... He, he, he keeps constantly saying, like, Oh, I always get back up. Yeah. Yeah, so... He just couldn't get back up that time. He was literally, like, completely debilitated. Okay. All right. Um... It's fucked up. Anything else about the collider scene where Spider-Man dies? Obviously... No, it's just so fucked up that Spider-Man dies. Well, Miles meets him for, like, two seconds. Yeah, um, and Miles is kind of... Oh, they, like, realize each other are Spider-Man as well. I mean, like, obviously Miles knows he's Spider-Man, but Sp Peter Parker also realizes, like, he's different. And and Peter also gives him the, like, hard drive to stop the collider, like, that he needs to keep it safe. Yes. Yeah. Uh... <clears throat> you want to take over the next part? Yeah, so, um... Because it is the speech stuff. Yes. So I really liked this because... Also talk about the Stanley stuff. Yes. 
Stanley's. Oh yes. Yeah, because our this is uh, I just we have been mentioning the Stanley cameos in these movies, and it's just like it, it it does make me feel a little better that we got to have this movie with one speaking that Far mm-hmm. From Home didn't have one. So yeah. I wanted to at least mention that he is in this one as well. Um, but yeah, there there's a part where uh Miles is like really torn up about watching having, the- having watched Spider Man die. Uh, and so he goes home, and his parents are kind of confused about what's happening, but there was an earthquake, so they assume that, like, he's come home because he's afraid because of the earthquake. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the next day, it's just, like, a little montage over Mary Jane giving a speech about Spider-Man having died, and Miles goes to, like, a costume shop. Where and... everybody's buying, like, in-memoriam Spider-Man suits. Yeah, it's and really the, the, fucking sad. The and seller, the seller is Stanley or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And it is a joke, but it's also, like, a real thing where uh, Miles is like, if it doesn't fit, can I return it? And Stanley is like, uh... Eventually, it always fits, and then there's the funny add-on joke where it no refunds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to mention something uh, going along with the uh, what we were talking about earlier with the the line where where Peter Parker says he's tired. Yeah. Uh, this movie kind of makes you feel like shit about the idea of spider-man what do you mean like like the idea of these poor people having to become spider-man okay no no no. like because they are miserable all of them are miserable and they only find solace in other spider people uh i guess you're kind of right you know what i mean like they all of these at least these versions of spider-man spider people or whatever come from a universe where they do not have anything you know what I mean? Like, Gwen Stacy doesn't have anyone. Peter B. Parker doesn't have anyone. Mm-hmm. Miles does have people, you know what I mean? No Way at Home better have some sort of cameo. Uh, I don't know. I don't... The thing is, it's like... I don't want them to CGI Stan Lee into the movie, so I really would prefer that they just don't have a cameo if they were going to do that. If it's something where it's like... uh. I don't know if you guys have been watching, but in the Guardians of the Galaxy game that we've been streaming lately, there's a bit where you go to the collector's collection in, in Nowhere, and there's his, just Stanley's pair of glasses, uh, and they're supposed to be, like, interdimensional glasses or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's like, stuff like that is fine, uh, but I do not... A statue of him or something like that? Yeah, exactly. That I, would I'd, work. Yeah, that would work, Eclipse. I just would not be fine with them, like, adding him into the movie as like a, a person i i don't know i don't like that idea in movies i didn't like it in fucking star wars when they did it with carrie fisher it just is weird or just a remembrance thing at the end i guess it's like uh, the idea though is like how many remembrance things do they really need to do because they have his, his name at the end of like infinity war Endgame. they have his, his name at like the end of like almost every marvel thing that came out like around he, when he died <laughs> i guess it's just the idea bless you Thank i guess you. it's just the idea it's like yes he did create it but it's like i guess we do have to move on at some point as well uh not saying like there can't be a cameo but i just i like i said i would rather if they're like gonna do it do like i said like dumb background stuff where it's like a statue but mm-hmm. then it's like if it's a statue it's like you can't just have that in every fucking marvel movie oh yeah um Maybe so a little Stanley bobblehead on someone's dash. Uh, Stanley tattoo on Thor's like neck or something. That's Thor's just, ass. Uh, Thor's constantly <laughs> just now in every movie, so we just always have a fucking Stanley cameo. <laughs> no, I'm not trying to shit on you, Eclipse. I'm just, uh, I think Marvel Studios could do something really inappropriate with it if they were given the chances, is, is all I'm saying, and I would not want that to happen. Maybe not Marvel Studios, but Disney, at least. No, me neither, but something that remembers the legend is essential, especially for No Way Home. True. I'll, I will give you that, for sure, for sure. Give Spider-Man a, a Stanley tattoo. Just have it. Just have a, an Excelsior tattoo on his forehead. Um... No, but I, I, going back, though, I was just saying that all these people are just very, very sad, and it makes you feel very sad for them. I... 
And a lot of their problem stems from the fact that they are spider people. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I know that's like the point of being Spider-Man, but when you have all these people coming together where like their whole plots are similar in that sense, it does make you feel sad. Yeah, it is kind of sad. Um, but at the end of the day, it, it is hopeful because they do all realize that they're not alone. You know what I mean? That's kind of mm -hmm. the point of this movie is that they realize that they're not the only ones. Yeah. Um, which is nice. I do like that. But the, I, you know, just, uh, I don't know, because they even have a scene where uh, Peter B. Parker, the Peter Parker that is in this movie, uh, when he meets Aunt May, she says, you look tired, Peter. And he says, I am tired. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, it's just a constant, like, reminding you that these people are just exhausted. Yeah. Especially Peter B. Parker. You know what I mean? He just wants to go home and be miserable yeah like literally that is like for the first half of the movie well no for like the entirety of the movie it's like he wants to go home and then be miserable but then he's gonna just kill himself to save other people yeah because he has nothing else to look forward to mm -hmm. you know what i mean like that's the plot of the movie we're dealing with right now is that spider-man's gonna kill himself because he's depressed basically <laughs> um fucking ruining this movie no it's no, no it, it's very it's very introspective for for a for a spider-man movie i think <laughs> i think it adds to the plot how much serious stuff they talk about because it's like mj and and that spider-man are also divorced which is i we're going ahead of stuff for later but it's like they're also divorced which is a very adult concept mm -hmm. to have like someone going through in a kid's movie yeah um and the reason they got divorced is because he didn't want kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, it's very, like I said, a very, very adult stuff. And I, I think that makes the movie better for it. Um, I was so blown away when they talked about PB's divorce. Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's pretty crazy. I, Cause I can't think of a, a kid's movie that deals with the like divorce like that very well mm -hmm. you know what i mean like yeah there's divorce but it's usually like oh uh the parent trap where it's like uh <laughs> our parents getting divorced was a mistake yeah you know what i mean and it's like the uh, them getting divorced is i guess a mistake but it's like rooted in reality yeah you know what i mean that like uh, a man and, uh, and a woman and a man not want like being thinking that he's capable of having kids like that happens fucking all the time yeah uh <laughs> spider-man crying in the tub yeah <laughs> That's fucked up. yeah uh it was definitely a mature hey even your superheroes deal with this shit kind of moments yeah exactly and i love that <laughs> um Oh, we should have talked about when when uh, Peter B or not Peter B when regular Peter Parker uh, dies. Uh, the collider was used again, mm -hmm. and it opened the rift between the five universes or whatever. Yeah. Um, and that's how the other Spider-Man people get into the universe or yeah, whatever. Yeah, because Peter's face was in the beam. Yeah, because it needs DNA mm -hmm. to to find whatever they're looking for because uh, we don't know it now. But Wilson Fisk is looking for his family from another dimension. Kingpin. King Kingpin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. So basically, after mm. Miles in and like learning how to use his try to use his spider powers, breaks the flash drive. That's like yeah. that's like the biggest scene during that. And then we meet Peter B. Parker. Yeah. Um. Anything you want to say about the meeting between... Uh, I just want to say... So, of course, we have the funny, like, chase scene. I don't think there's a lot to say. There. Yeah, I don't... It's like, just see that. Yeah, you know, just it, watch it. Yeah, that's the thing is it's like... When we are talking about these movies, I want you guys all to know that, like, the reason we kind of don't... Obviously, we talk about cool scenes and, like, action, but it's, like, it's hard to describe an action scene. Yeah. Um, so, if we're recommending the movie, and if you actually are interested... I mean, if you've already seen it, then you've seen it, but just go watch it again, then, because it's just that good. I just like the interesting thing that they introduce in this scene, um, where it's like, okay, you have multiple spider people, how are they going to interact? Which is, like, with with Peter just, like, walking down buildings and stuff. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's just, like, if you are a spider person, yeah, that's, like, what you're gonna do when you talk to one another. Just, like, fucking stroll on buildings and stuff. Yeah, like, on the sides of buildings. And, yeah. and they angle it like they're walking regularly. But then you see, like, 
people in the windows like staring at them walking up the ceiling and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but basically the most important part is that Peter B. Parker agrees to help Miles try to stop the collider because that's what the dead Peter Parker, Parker asked him to do. Yeah, so their first plan of action is to get a new goober, which is a new heart, hi, what they call the hydra. Uh, hard drive? The hard, hydra? The hydra. Uh, the goober. <laughs> Yeah, so they got to get a new goober from Alchemax, which is the company that Kingpin runs, basically, in yeah. this universe. It's weird, because Alchemax is always, a, like, a different fucking company in every single Spider-Man universe. I know, it's like for some other fucker, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this time it's Wilson Fisk's, I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we get a scene where they, they are breaking into the tower. Uh... We learned that P uh, that Miles has invisibility powers. Yeah. Oh, we should have ex that we should have explained that uh, Ven uh, Venom Strike powers also reveal themselves for Miles uh, when he first meets Peter B. Parker because he because yep. he gets scared and he shocks him. He stun guns him. Yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah, Fist design does always crack me. Up yeah. No. Well. Every time I see fucking Fisk in that movie, I laugh every time, even though he's like one of the most depressing characters in that entire movie. <laughs> um, he's like, but he like, the thing is, it's like so sad because he deserves it too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not his not family. Not that his family not, deserves it. Not, yeah. that his, not that his wife and children deserve it, but he himself deserves what he gets. Yeah. Um, I just have, <laughs> I just have after going to Alchemist, I have enter live Octavius and enter spider Gwen. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we meet Dr. Liv Octavius. Mm -hmm. um, Olivia Octavius. Which is this movie's gender-bent version of uh, Doc Ock, which is really cool. I also... Really cool. Did you did you notice that in, like, uh, the backstory for, for like, Spider-Gwen, she was also fighting her version of Doc Ock? Yeah, that was a, a way different Doc Ock, though. You could tell by the the tentacles. tentacles yeah, they yeah. look. Yeah, they, they were like they looked more like Spider-Man Two tentacles. They did, which is uh, the, interesting. The, the really fun thing, I love the new design because, like, with this, her tentacles are like silicon. It looks like. Yeah, they're made out of like tubing. Yeah. Yeah, they're made of uh, instead of metal. Yeah, no, they're fucking brilliant. She's like one of the best characters in this fucking movie. Yeah. Just because of like the way they reveal her too. Yeah. Uh, if you, like, obviously you're, you're getting it spoiled, but the way they reveal her in the movie, just go check it out if you haven't seen that bit, because mm -hmm. it's just so clever. Um, because they constantly allude to her, too, throughout the movie, because there's, like, a bit where Miles is watching a documentary about her in school. Yeah. And they, like, cover her name. Um, and you're just like, that's a normal lady. You're like, well, you, no, you don't even think anything of it. Well, yeah, it's like, whatever. And then, and then later on, it's like, oh, Miles saw that documentary. That's the lady that they need to get a new goober from. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's and, it. And then you're like, holy shit, wait, she's fought Spider-Man like a billion times already. It, so it, Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, no, really, really cool. Yeah. Um, but no, we get a, a cool scene where they, they run through the forest and then spider Gwen comes and saves their asses. Mm-hmm. She uh, sure does. Uh, we get her backstory. Uh, that that, And her backstory is that uh, Peter Parker was her best friend who turned into the lizard and died, which mm -hmm. I didn't... I, I, seeing this movie again, it's just because I had... This is the only, like, the second time I've seen this and I have not seen it since it came out, like, in theaters. Mm-hmm. Um... I forgot that that is her like plot or whatever or her story that's really cool mm -hmm. um also i love this forest scene because they go to upstate new york and so the colors are like so pale and mm. like wintry compared mm -hmm. to when they're in new york city eclipse says the the tentacle is the tentacles are are kind of weird but so cool and oh uh rose says her name is fucking octavia not octavia sorry livia octavia yeah yeah sorry because <laughs> because her last name has to be feminine as well yeah <laughs> finally a movie movie acknowledge upstate new york <laughs> says rose yeah finally i know i that I'm is not, true though i i'm not saying this to like front on you or anything but brant thought originally 
New York was far smaller than it really is just because everything presents that New York City is just New York, like the state of New York. So I got where you Yeah, were but I mean from. like uh, the way media portrays New York and like California, it seems like I don't even think a lot of people know that California has like forests. I think when most people think of California, they're just like the beach, dude. Let's go to Malibu. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I know New York State is is pretty fucking big. Uh. uh, uh, uh oh. Uh. We learned Fisk's backstory in this bit. Uh. Mm-hmm. Where he was found out by his wife and child beating the shit out of Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jesus Christ. So they leave him uh-huh. because they realize he's a fucking monster. Because in this universe, no one knows that Wilson Fisk is the pen- kingpin besides uh, Spider-Man. Yeah. Um. Which you raise a good point, as because later on in the movie, uh, MJ, who is married to Peter in that universe, uh, the one who dies, she doesn't know that Wilson Fisk is Kingpin. And I, I kind of excused it as like, oh, Spider-Man is just now fighting him. But there is the whole thing where his family just fucking died and stuff. I feel like Peter would talk to MJ about that. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it's, it's not so much as a loophole as it just, it's like... Why? Because there is like a benefit dinner he holds for Spider-Man at the end of the movie well, or whatever. It's a very interesting thing where they frame it like Aunt May was more involved with the Spider-Man stuff than than MJ. And she probably was. Yeah. Um, in all honesty, and mm-hmm. the way the movie portrays it. And I, I just wanted to say here too, like this is the point. I, <laughs> I've always noticed it before, but just like how Fisk is just mouth breathing his way through this whole movie. <laughs> Shout out to Leif Schreiber because he does a really good job. He does a really good job. It's just Kingpin is always sitting there with like his mouth. The, uh, Clip says it's not always about the money, Spider Man. Yeah, that's what he says. Uh, he does say that. Also, Rose <laughs> says her name, her surname is Octavius. Her first name is Olivia. Oh, did you accidentally say Octavia at first? I thought you said Liv. Well, no, no, Rose says Octavia right here. That's why I corrected myself because I thought Rose was correcting me. Oh. That That's. I did. Wait, what? I'm confused. What? Yeah, I'm, con- uh, I'm confused. Fucking confused now. <laughs> so, is, is her name? Her name's Liv Octavius. Then. Yeah. Okay. Olivia. Yeah, Olivia Octavius. <laughs> I didn't. I wasn't. I was messed up. Okay. 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 <laughs> I didn't. I was. I, I wasn't. <laughs> All right. Like, what the fuck is going on? Uh. But my next two notes is I have our uh, enter <laughs> enter Aunt May and enter Spider People. Yeah, so, so there's the interesting thing where all the spider people knew to just find Aunt May. Which, to me, is also a loophole, and I'll explain it in a bit, but... Uh, <laughs> okay, so, after To Lick the Wounds, Peter B. Parker decides that he needs to go find Aunt May, because in his universe, Aunt May has, like, a shed or whatever with all of his Spider-Man equipment that mm-hmm. he needs to get. But this universe is, obviously, Peter Parker just died, and in his universe, he buried Aunt May... Uh, yeah. So it's horrible. So it's like this meeting of ghosts basically. It's so mm-hmm. fucking weird and it's really nice too because they clearly love each other even though they're not the same versions of each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um and I do like the idea of this storytelling where it's like the love these characters have for each other spans dimensions. That's yeah. really that's really really cool. It's sweet. Um but yeah, so Aunt May brings them down to this Spider-Man's uh, spider lair where basically he has like a whole goddamn setup with like 20,000 spider suits and a plane and a bike and everything else. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's revealed that Spider-Man Noir, Spider-Ham, and uh, Penny Parker have all uh, thought of the same thing to come to Aunt May because they didn't know what else to do. Yeah. But... I have a I have a bone to pick. Yeah, pick your bone. Does every version of Spider-Man besides Miles Morales have an Aunt May? Is that just a canon thing? I don't know. No clue. What? Spider? No, Gwen Stacy definitely doesn't, right? Yeah, she. No, there there's no way she would. Well, yeah, but she didn't go to Aunt May. No, I know, but I'm just thinking... Well, no, actually, now that I think about it, because they all are versions of specifically Peter Parker. 
Mm -hmm. So they would have an Aunt May then. I guess so. Because it's like even it, Penny Parker is just Peter Parker, but a girl. Uh, in anime. Rose said LMAO, the little spider girl, has an Aunt May. Oh, she does? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I cool, did. Cool, thank you, Rose. Yeah, no, I, I, I have not read any of these comics, so I just was like, do really all of these people have an Aunt May? Like, I know, yeah. like, they're supposed to connect, but it's just like, I just was wondering, like, what determines if a spider person has, like, an Aunt May or not. Mm -hmm. um, but thank you, Rose. I, I, I'm assuming so, like, I'm kind of figuring out myself, like, oh, they all are versions of Peter Parker, even, like, Spider Man Noir. Like, the, the only difference is, like, his Uncle Ben is called Uncle Benjamin. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, Good stuff. Yeah, but Spider People are really cool. Nicolas Cage, uh, John Mulaney, and who's who plays? <clears throat> what, Penny? Yeah, who plays uh, Kimiko Glenn? I, I She, what, what, wasn't she in something? I, thought, I don't freaking know. Oh, oh she was Orange is, the, Orange is the New Black. Yeah, she was also in that Nerve movie that everybody really liked. Or, or like, it it was divisive if people did or didn't like it or whatever. I'm but... a big fan of Orange is the New Black. Is she a main character in that? Not main, but... Well, she's there for five years, it says on, on the IMDb thing. Yeah, there's a lot of reoccurring characters. There's so many characters in Orange is the New Black. Not to be... Oh, that was a joke. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, oh, oh. You're, you're making a joke. Oh, Aunt May. Oh, well, way. oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I didn't see that because Akasha just said to me, Aunt May. I wasn't looking at the chat. Yeah, you fucker. <laughs> That's you. What the fuck? You're the I fucker didn't, I didn't here. I didn't think it was a joke. How would I... Th Bro? You know, let's settle our differences and blame Rose. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Um... But then everyone fucking attacks them. <laughs> you mean rejects Miles? Is that what you're talking about? Or were the spider oh, people? Oh yeah, I guess we should talk about that first. Oh well, what? Before. Oh yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say, the, yeah, the, the part where people. they tell Miles to kind of fuck off is really important. Yeah. Uh, so all the spider people realize that Miles can't use any of his powers unless provoked. Mm. Um, because at every point in this movie, he's only used his powers when it's convenient. Yeah. Uh, so they kick him out of the spider the spider band basically. Um. Well, they don't quite kick him out. They're just like, really, like. Rose says, "I'll accept that it was a poor joke." <laughs> no, we're, we're we're mostly joking <laughs> anyway, Rose. <laughs> um, but what were you gonna say? Um, I was saying that uh, they don't like kick him out or anything they're just like really you think he can do this like, yeah well because he's supposed to be the one that stays behind to destroy the collider so that none of them have to because if they did they would die yeah because uh we didn't really mention it but the fact that these guys from the dimensions or whatever are there it's like tearing their atoms apart or whatever mm -hmm. uh, and the longer they stay there the more they're getting fucked up or whatever mm-hmm uh... Oh, yeah, so Miles, after having the big confrontation with the spider people, goes to see Uncle Aaron. Because he's upset. Because he... he wants advice from his uncle. Yeah. And it's really fucked up because he was going to tell him that, that he's he Spider -Man. Spider-Man. Yeah. yeah. And then the Prowler shows up, which we haven't been talking about the Prowler, but he's like the coolest villain in this entire he's movie. so good in the theme for the Prowler. Yeah, the, uh, the Prowler... The Prowler... <laughs> <laughs> well, you make it sound like shit when you do it like that. I can't make a fucking synth noise. Yeah, like exactly. Mouth. That's it's just it's good. It's really really good. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's revealed to Miles that his uncle is the Prowler, mm -hmm. uh, which we spoiled for you guys earlier. But it's supposed to be like a big reveal in the movie. Uh. Oh, well, then he instant once he instantly figures that out, he goes back to the spider people to tell them yeah. about his uncle. Uh, in a in a cool ass scene I where think, the prowler is chasing Miles. I think it honestly the fight at Aunt May's house is like the best scene in the entire movie. Really? I really no because it's like he shows up. Yeah. And then in he starts to like freak out about what he's trying to tell them, and then they go, "Were you followed?" And he says, "No." And the like, the second he says it, all of their spider senses go off. Yeah. I think that's fucking brilliant, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and just the the fight scene itself in Aunt May's house is just... I love 
because that poor woman. Well, that poor woman. But you know how we were talking about like in these movies, it seems like people don't know how to like film very tight fight scenes because there's like that fight scene in the in Amazing Spider-Man one in like the bullet train and stuff, and there's a few other I can't re- necessarily remember, but we were talking about where they're kind of closer and they don't work as well. Yeah, it's like this is all in a what like in one room of a small ass house basically, and it's like the one like probably to me the best fight scene in the entire movie Mm -hmm. because all the spider people are like kicking the shit out of the like because there's a villain for every spider person because we didn't talk about the other like side villains because they don't really matter because they're just kind of there but there is Tombstone Scorpion. Uh, is that it? Tombstone Scorpion Octavia. Or uh, Olivia's uh, there. And then the Prowler, obviously, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's four of them. Yeah. Because then Fisk is fucking waiting outside in his car like a big bitch. With a big pistol. With a what? big pistol. Um, yeah. Chekhov's gun. I, I love how um I was trying to make the synth noise with my mouth, and now Rose is trying to spell it out in the chat. <laughs> is she? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> Uh, no, if you want, just go listen to the the the, the Prowler theme on like fucking Spotify. I, I listen to the or just or soundtrack just, all the time. Yeah, I do too. Even just the album because the music that was made by like Post Malone and Swally and oh no, I mean like the no, the, I know you mean the soundtrack, but I'm talking the about OST. Yeah, no, but yeah. I'm talking about the album that was made with like Sunflower and stuff. We haven't yeah. even talked about Sunflower, which is like the theme the of the theme, movie. Yeah. Fucking banger. Uh, also, I want to say during this scene, because I noticed this, I had an epiphany during this scene. I've watched this movie four fucking times, and this is the first thing I noticed. This is the first time I noticed this. So, there's a scene when they first uh, reveal that Olivia is Doc Ock. Uh-huh. And there's a part where, she, oh, yeah, her. where Spider-Man makes a joke, and he goes... Uh, I'm guessing your I'm friends. Gu- I'm guessing your enemies call you Doc Ock. No, and- she says I'm guessing your friends call you Doc oh, Ock, yeah, yeah. and she says my friends call me Liv. My enemies call me Doc Ock. Yeah, and I was like, okay. She shows up. At, yeah, she, she sh- shows up at Aunt May's house. Aunt May calls her Liv. Yeah, she were, suggesting she's they like, used to be friends. Yeah, they, she literally. She goes, oh great, Liv. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, oh shit, I didn't notice that until. I mean, this is my only second time watching it, but I didn't notice it until this time as well. Yeah, that's a little, very very clever. A, a little bit of just tiny tiny character detail. It's yeah. Great. Uh, also. I just gotta say, the fight scene's even better because, like, Aunt May kicks the shit out of some of the villains in this scene, too. Because, like, I, the <laughs> scorpion in the head with, like, a wrench or something. No, she she hits Tombstone out of the door with, like, a frying pan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, like, brilliant. I'm like, how the fuck can she exert any force on Tombstone? But I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's... it's Whatever, she's Aunt May. She's too cool. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Like, isn't that his thing that he's just really fucking strong? That he's, yeah, that he's, like, invincible. Yeah. yeah. Like every other Spider-Man villain. Well, yeah. Yeah. Except they're all invincible for different stupid reasons. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but this fight ends off in, in Uncle Aaron getting fucking shot. Yeah. Uh, because Miles gets captured by the Prowler and he reveals his face to his uncle. So he won't fucking murder, murder him. him. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, which he doesn't, obviously, because he loves his nephew. Yeah. Uh, which immediately results in him getting killed by the kingpin. Mm-hmm. Not Miles, uh, Aaron. Mm-hmm. Um, we get a really sad scene where the police show up and, and Jeff finds his brother's body and stuff. And he thinks that it was Spider-Man, the new Spider-Man who did it. Yeah. Um, which I'm glad that it's like a, that plot point isn't like a main point in the movie. Yeah, and that it's not continuing into the next one. Yeah, that, like, they resolve it within this movie. Yeah. Because uh, it's just kind of a t- true and tri- tired point at this point. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? The Because it's like, it, I don't know. I, I was saying, like, in the Amazing Spider-Man review, it's, like, one of my favorite parts, the whole Captain Stacy stuff, but it's, like, I don't want it again still. Yeah. Um... Especially when it's like, oh, this other Spider-Man existed for 10 years, and then it's like, the, for some reason, Jeff assumes that the Spider-Man just killed someone. Yeah, um, I think it's just trying to show that, like... He doesn't trust Spider-Man. He Or, or that he's, like, kind of high-strung because he's seen that his brother has been killed, you know what True I mean? that as well. Um... 
but yeah, after this scene, the spider the 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 spider people fully reject Miles now, right? Well, the thing is, they say that Peter made the decision. Yeah, but but they yeah they do. Yeah. But I'm saying I'm saying the band. You know, yes. he gets he gets finally kicked out of the band. Yeah. You mean Uncle A A Ron? Yes, I do. <laughs> he he gets kicked out of Gwen Stacy's rock band. Yeah. Oh yeah, she does have a rock band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, in her in her universe or whatever. She also has Clone College, which we don't have. So. Yeah, that's fucked up. That is fucked up. Chris L- Chris Lord and Phil Miller. <laughs> even though we are getting Clone High season two or whatever so that's exciting yeah that is if you haven't watched clone high go fucking watch it now (laughs) it's all on youtube for free just watch it um yeah they reject him because they feel that he can't do it Mm -hmm. um because even in that final fight he can't do anything yeah or the fight the fight at aunt may's house or whatever yeah um kind of not fair because that is his origin story and his uncle was there so come on I know he couldn't do anything otherwise, but it's like he's really traumatized after knowing that it's Uncle Aaron. Yeah, but he, he I guess the point is like he doesn't do anything to fight any of the other villains though. Yeah. You know what I mean? He because he can't. Yeah. Um not just the Prowler because mm-hmm. there like we said there are four other villains there. Mhm. Um but yeah, they reject him and they tie him up in some spider web and leave him or whatever. Mhm. Uh and then Jeff comes to Miles' dorm door or whatever, and we get, like, the saddest scene in the entire movie that made me fucking cry. Because it's, it's really sad where Jeff comes to talk to Miles about just how he treats him as a son and how he feels that he understands that he, you know, he pushes him too hard, but that he feels that his son is too special for not to be pushed hard mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And it's really emotional because miles literally cannot say anything back yeah uh because they like i said the spider people tied him up and put a little thing over his mouth a little bit of web uh or whatever but yeah it any anything you have to add to the scene no it's just it's it's very impactful it is it's it's probably the most because they're in that scene we also get the parallel between um, so Uncle Aaron just died, mm-hmm. and there's the parallel between Uncle Aaron and Jeff moving apart because he says sometimes people move apart miles, and, and I then, yeah, and he says, but I don't, I, I don't want us to move apart. Oh God, you're gonna make me cry just saying that. I Jesus know, Christ, it's terrible. And and it's just like it's like a thing where he is not only saying that he wants to be there for miles, but he's also. Uh, Reg- not explicitly saying that he wishes he hadn't moved apart from Aaron. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's it's so fucked up. This movie is very sad. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like the more you look into it, the more sad it really, really is. But it's just, I guess, at the end of the day, it is hopeful or whatever. Yeah. Um. But this instantly leads or inspires Miles to take a leap of faith, as Peter B. B. Parker told him. Yes. Um, which is, think about the scene even just sends... What's up, danger? Sends goosebumps. Uh, like, look at look at me. Oh, my God. Yeah. That is fucking covered in goosebumps. Uh, my hands, <laughs> my hair's literally standing oh on edge God. because of how scene, like good the scene, the, the leap of face scene is. Yeah. And everybody fucking loves it. It's... It, it's a billion that that one shot we all know the shot it's a billion people's desktop <laughs> it literally was my desktop savior for like a year because yeah. i thought it was so fucking cool yeah. uh <laughs> rose and eclipse in the chat though we're talking about the emotional scene mm, um what are they saying rose just said oh yeah that scene was good and eclipse sent emojis about it <laughs> yeah um, the sad emoji, the holding head emoji. But no, Miles makes his 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 own spider suit, which he spray paints off of an original Peter Parker suit. Mm-hmm. Um, which his suit's fucking awesome. Yeah, it's so cool. I love like the bits like on the fingertips where it's like you can see that it's spray painted and mm-hmm. stuff. Um, wearing that must be a fucking hazard though. <laughs> uh, but. Excuse me, holy shit. Uh, we're in the final bit of the movie. Yes, we are. The uh, final fight. Yeah, so... 
what, what I guess what do you what do you want to mention? Do we want to mention the part where they break in, or do we just want to mention the fight stuff? Just the fight stuff. Yeah. Okay. So they get there. Uh, they they start to. The plan is obviously that Peter B. Parker is going to stay behind and shut down the collider, which is going to kill him, right? Yeah. And everybody else is going to return to their home. They get there um, and realize that they were being waited for the whole time because they instantly get fucking ambushed by like owned by like tombstone Doc Ock, Doc Ock, Tombstone, uh, Scorpion, the Scorpion, a bunch of guys with guns, yeah, uh, shit like that. Um, they get the shit kicked out of them. Miles shows up. He saves them. I guess what what do you think is important to mention? Because like it is hard to explain a fight scene, but it is literally it the is. last scene of the movie. It's just they really went like balls to the walls for this fight scene. Oh yeah, with, with like the colors. And yeah, stuff. well, because the dimensions are like colliding or whatever. And it's like within the dimensions, like vehicles and buildings and stuff are coming through and different items. Um, and a, a spider pig gets his, his funniest moments during this last part. Well, because he gets to act the most like a cartoon. Well, in, yeah, because he's cartoon fighting Scorpion. <laughs> and Scorpion's constantly telling him he sucks. Yeah. You got a problem with cartoons? And, and Scorpion's like, what are you, a silly cartoon? <laughs> and then, and then Spider-Ham says, what do what, what, you got a problem with cartoons? <laughs> um... Isn't the window breaking significant that he wasn't fully ready to jump, but he did anyway? Like, he stuck to it. Or my sister says, balls down backwards. <laughs> um, I don't know. The the significance of the leap of faith scene where he... I guess, yeah, the fear of letting go. Yeah, technically. I, 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 I never have thought about it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I, it could totally be seen as that way. Mm -hmm. uh, it would make complete and utter sense. Uh, but yeah, they're just a lot of fighting. Uh, and then there's, um, like, it's, it's just a really short thing, but like when Miles shows up and he's like, okay, I'm ready. I'm going to shut down the collider. Uh, everyone goes through and then they're like, uh, Peter Parker. Oh, we, we forgot to say that Penny Parker's fucking robot dies. Yeah. Penny Parker's robot dies. But, um, Peter Parker is like. Kind of still uncertain. He's like, no, like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to shut down the collider and stay here. And it's like a point where they're like fighting each other for a moment. Yeah. 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 I also got to point out, like, uh, I know uh, there's just a really, <clears throat> like, one, the, probably my favorite shot in the entire fight scene, mm -hmm. uh, in the end fight scene. But there's a scene where, uh, <sighs> Spider Gwen shoots a web backwards mm -hmm. towards Miles and Peter. Yeah. And Miles grabs onto it and it attaches itself to Peter. And it follows her and she goes and she punches Doc Ock, which is quickly then followed behind by the web by Miles by Peter, who both then <laughs> yeah. also punch. I think it's just like the coolest fucking and thing. And she gets hit by a train. Yeah, and then she dies. <laughs> uh. <sighs> It's not even a joke. She does. Does she die? No, I, I like she actually gets hit by a train. No, I know, but yeah, does she die? I don't think so. I, I guess that's the problem is the only one they confirm that lives after this is Wilson Fisk. Yeah. Because uh, the whole tower does crumble. It does, yeah. So I don't Where know. Where the fuck did Tombstone go? Where's Scorpion? <laughs> yeah, no yeah. clue. Um... I, I'm sorry, everybody. I'm just finding it because it is hard when the last scene is kind of a fight scene yeah it's hard to describe a fight scene but we don't need to no we, i we guess can go just, watch it again yeah <laughs> uh he sends all of them home he does it mm -hmm. um even though wilson fisk is going to be the last boss fight and peter b parker wants to stay behind to help but miles proves to him that he can do it yeah he's like i can fucking take on this mammoth yeah there's, <laughs> there's a lot of like like uh symmetry shots that happen throughout the movie that we haven't mentioned that are really clever. One of these being that, like, earlier in the movie, Peter B. Parker, like, sweeps Miles from underneath his feet and, like, catches him off guard. And this is how Miles, like, tricks Peter into going back into his dimension or whatever. Yeah. By, like, showing him that he's as clever now or whatever. Yeah. Um... But yeah, Sorry, I was just petting the little Then boy. we get the, the final... The final, final fight scene between... Miles and Fisk, which is kind of fucked up because you see uh, 
another dimension version of his wife and child who are like buzzing in and out kind yeah of is it uh, so wait is the idea is, is it supposed to be the past or is it supposed to be a different it's not the past it's that it is them from a different dimension witnessing, and him. witnessing him do it again that's so fucking weird i know it's like a whole different set of his family watching him do the exact same thing again. So wait, did he kill another alternate version of his wife and kid, possibly? I don't know. I don't know where the fuck they went. <laughs> what the fuck? They, Holy <laughs> shit, I thought like that is supposed to... I thought that that scene is supposed to be like a flash from the past or something. No, it's them from a different dimension. Oh my god, okay. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, I didn't even... Yeah, that's fucked up. But yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what... Um, what are you humming? Yeah, about what are you humming, <laughs> Eclipse? Uh, but yeah, Spider Man beats uh, Kingpin by doing the hay move. Yeah. He, he, hey. And he shocks the shit out of him and sends him into the. Sends him to hell. Into the big, bu <laughs> into the big button that shuts off the collider because uh -huh. I guess there's just one button that shuts down the whole thing, which yeah. is really funny. But the important scene I just want to mention, like before he does that, is where Kingpin literally like does the same thing he did to the other Peter Parker, where he basically like crushes all his insides with his big fat fist. Oh, and he survives, yeah. Yeah, and and it's just like it's that moment where it's like, are you gonna get up? You know what I mean? Mm. And he well, does. yeah, yeah. And Jeff is also there. We didn't mention, <clears> but Jeff is there to, I guess, just witness that Spider-Man is a good guy. Yeah, uh, and turn into a little red stain. Like yeah, we were talking about. Uh, I never knew that as well. Thought it was kind of a flashback scene too. Ah, but yeah, no. I guess Eclipse thinking on it though, the way they portray it, they do flash in in and out like everybody else does from a separate dimension. So. Well, also because they already put their DNA into the collider, so it's already seeking them from a different dimension. And true. it's like it's not a it's not a time machine; it's a dimension machine. I guess, but like, isn't the idea that there could be a dimension that is in the past? No. No, there couldn't be. I don't. I just don't see how that would work because it's still your your world. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. I guess so. Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah, Eclipse just said, yeah, just realizing that now, lol. Yeah. Yeah, it is kind of fucked up. Uh, <laughs> no, it's it's definitely a flash from a different dimension or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I've only watched it once, gotta watch it again sometime. Mm -hmm. Yes, please do. Please, please do. Yeah, and like I said, I watched it f four times. It was just as good the fourth time, so. Um, but yeah, Miles wins. Uh, we get the final like, scene where... Jeff calls Miles and and they re reconcile where Jeff is like, hey, maybe we can find like a empty wall somewhere that the police like ordained for you to be able to tag and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, okay, he's actually making an attempt. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's really they make a compromise together. Yeah, uh, and it he goes down as Spider Man and he says, I love you to Jeff. Yep, <laughs> which. Uh, is, uh, is funny, but I don't know how Jeff doesn't know that's just a son. <laughs> I, I also really, really like the voice that uh, Miles does for his version of Spider- Thank you for your bravery. Yeah, thank you for your bravery. <laughs> Mad respect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's really, really good. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Miles goes home and uh, a portal opens to Spider-Gwen and that's how the movie ends. Yep. Is there is there really anything else that we're missing there? Nope. Uh, except for the post credit scene, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what's the post credit scene, Akasha? Um, Miguel O'Hara's there. Uh huh. He says hi to us. Yeah, hey, he's played by Oscar Isaac. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, it makes me seeing that post credit scene makes me question why people are even thinking he's a villain in the new movie mm -hmm. because literally his whole thing is that he's making a thing so he can travel the dimensions to uh to uh recruit other spider people mm -hmm. because the joke is that he goes to the old 70s cartoon and he's in that pointing meme mm -hmm. or whatever and that's like the whole bit of it of mm -hmm. the post credit scene is that that's like the setup for what he's doing uh, it's very confusing that people think he's going to be the villain, knowing that's, like, what the movie sets him up to be doing. Yeah. Uh, but whatever. I'm still very excited for Spider-Verse 2. Uh, any final <laughs> thoughts on Spider-Verse 1, though? It's a perfect movie. Good movie. Uh, what would you give it? 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. 
Yeah, uh, I don't know what else you guys expected. We literally have not talked shit about this movie, really. <laughs> uh, except for, like, dumb little plot things that, like, are just stupid and don't really matter at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Um... But yeah, I'm really excited for like spidered, excited <laughs> for Spider Verse two. Mhm. Mm I think it's gonna be really, really good. And then in two days we're going to fucking see No Way Home. Yeah. Uh, I guess we should talk about that real quick. Um. I will give one nitpick on my side, says Ooh, Rose. Ooh, what is it that it. the other Spider Men don't have as many as much development? Is, like, <clears throat> is that it? Just wondering. A lot of people say that. And I kind of agree, but I don't think it's that important at the end of the day. But let's hear it, Rose. Uh, let's but let's talk about No Way Home for a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to see No Way Home in two days. Yes. Yeah, so... Uh, one day early. One day early. When do you think we're going to be able to get the review on? You wanted to do it Friday before I go to work. Yeah, do you think you you could still make that? I think so, yeah. Willem Dafoe looks fucking amazing in the new movie. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Everybody looks amazing. I'm Hell very yeah. I'm very very excited. Alfa Molina too. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for Rose on her uh, little <clears throat> nitpick. She's fucking, she's obviously typing a little bit though. Both those fuckers are so old as well. They de-age them in the movie though. No, I know. At least I, I I don't know. Do you even really have to de-age Willem Dafoe? He looks exact. That's what I'm saying. He looks the exact fucking same. He hasn't. His face hasn't changed in like 50 years. <laughs> it really, really has not. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I wonder how long that fucking. Uh, in the beginning, the art style is a lot more comic book heavy, and the line art has fizzy, multicolored effects on top of it, and that really bothers me. Being slightly sli sight impaired because I can't see. The clean ba uh, black lines, let alone the rainbow lines. But that's such a nitpick. Well, you know what, Rose, as someone who does have sight problems, I can understand that. Um, yeah, I, I guess at the end of the day, I, I, I completely agree with you. It is just a, a nitpick, though. Uh, and thank f uh, fuck they changed Jamie Foxx's electro design. I'm, yeah, thank, we've talked about it a million times, but thank fucking God. Yeah. I get you, though, Rose, on that part. I guess it's just... At the end of the day, they can't, uh, not to be like, oh, a dick, but it's like, uh, obviously they can't cater a movie towards every single person. And that's just the, the fear of movies. But, uh, you know, if that's the only nitpick of the movie you have, uh, that's pretty good. That, that is pretty good. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Uh, I hope you don't take that as me being rude because I'm really not trying to be mm -hmm. at all. Um, uh, a clip said I sent some Spider-Man bloopers to the Discord a while ago. There are some really funny ones of Willem. Ooh, Did you well, watch that? I have not, just because... Let's watch it. I want to fucking watch right, that. Yeah, well, we'll definitely watch it once we get off stream here, then. Yeah, thank you, Eclipse. Uh, yeah, but I... If not me, maybe both of us. I don't know. Uh, it's One of us, me, at least, will be back <laughs> later on today, I think, because I do want to do another stream. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. I don't know if Akasha will be accompanying me. Her and I need to go do some grocery shopping and stuff first, so. Yes, yeah, fucking late grocery shopping. Yeah, but, uh, thank you guys so much. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, it was an excellent movie, and yeah, the small nitpick that affected my own enjoyment of the movie. As the movie went on, it got less severe, so that's good. Yeah, and I think that's kind of a point that they're, that they make, is that once, like, all of the characters, like, kind of have to have, like, a meshing where it's all coherent or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, which just props to the movie for just having like constantly changing art styles the entire film and like it not being a big deal. Yeah. Like, cause you could, like, I don't know, like a lot of movies would do something like that and like make it like, ah, uh, think of like, uh, the new Looney Tunes movie. Like it was sold based off the fact that like, oh, there's going to be 3D renders of the, Bro, Looney, of the Looney Tune awesome, characters dude. in this movie. That's awesome. <laughs> on that note let's end it yeah all right all right um there's no channels to raid so we're just gonna end it anyway thank you guys for showing up i hope you guys enjoyed the review love you all and i will talk to you later bye bye, bye, -bye. 3d big chungus